Howdy everyone, WABYA here. Gonna make a real quick video. We're gonna do some testing of different type of plastics. Um, we're gonna put them over the front of this small horn antenna. We're gonna measure how much attenuation different plastics have at uh, 10.36 gig. Very simple setup. We got a SIG Gen set to uh, approximately plus 10 dBm. Uh, we've got uh, some Agilent uh, cables with three and a half millimeter connectors on them. They're not phase stable, but they're not going to be touched in any way. Uh, they're not going to move one millimeter, so it'll work for our purposes here. Um, that'll feed the horn directly. Pan device setup, the horn definitely will not move one bit. And um, what we're going to do is this is going to be our transmit source and about 20 wavelengths away we've just made uh, jerry-rigged a small receive probe antenna uh, didn't even measure it just approximately quarter wavelength long stub coming out of the uh, end connector uh, adapter and that goes directly into the uh, spectrum analyzer so you can see just me moving my hand around we can get variations easily of uh, plus or minus 1 db so uh, what i'm going to do the way we're going to test these different type of plastics and I guess I should go over the plastics I just went around the house real quick and grabbed what I, uh, what I could um, this was uh, from a mouthwash bottle it's a uh, fairly stiff plastic I would have to probably apply a heat gun to it to flatten it out to use it but uh, we thought we would test it um, here's a lid from some fiber and so I just called it the fiber lid and it looks like it's a, it's a very shiny Maybe a polypropylene would be my guess, but uh, I really don't know for, for certain. Um, we've got a coffee can lid, uh, Maxwell House coffee can. And I thought it'd be interesting since it's pretty thick, very durable, and it's got uh, some pigment in it, some dye. So I thought it'd be interesting to test it. And we thought uh, we'll try some uh, garbage bags. And I picked this one because it's black and I'm thinking, well, oh, maybe they've got some carbon black in it. So it'll be interesting to see what happens at uh, 10 gig. Um, grabbed a Ziploc bag. So just for the fun of it. Milk jug. Went in the trash uh, container and I found we had a, a milk jug. So it worked out just perfect. So I sliced a small chunk of that. Um, bird suet uh, containers. Birds were done with some so I just sliced it. Cleaned it with some isopropanol and uh, disinfected it, cleaned it, brought it in. Uh, D, uh, DVD case. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is polystyrene, if I had to take a guess. Pretty thin, very uh, rugged. Uh, that would work. And then uh, styrofoam from a, uh, a dining plate. Uh, these are kind of heavier duty than most uh, styrofoam plates. They're, they're pretty stiff. So what I did, what I found I had to do, I'm going to try to keep the video short, is because I found that my presence was definitely affecting uh, the ref reflections from my, my body moving around was causing enough variations to make the, the testing useless. What I did was, uh, in the case of like this um, uh, styrofoam plate, I took uh, some hot glue and I laid a small bead of it across the, uh, the front. And what I would do is I would come up to the uh, to the horn, and I slowly came down until the uh, the hot glue was just touching and made a uh, a seal to the horn. What was nice about that is it kept it uh, completely flush up against the horn, and uh, no glue whatsoever went uh, inside. And that allowed me then to step away. I found that if I moved back at least uh, about six feet. I could then zoom in uh, with the camera, get a, uh, a reading, and for example, I could do a, um, a max hold uh, or a, uh, a peak search, and uh, I could get a, a reading, and then I would simply, after documenting that, I would go ahead and um, all I had to do was just lift up on this, and the hot glue separated itself very, very quickly and easily off this cold metal surface so with just a slightest amount of uh, uh, force this would just pop right off and it in no way affected the alignment or uh, did I move this setup one bit so I was able to uh, apply and take off 
the plastic and then I would grab a second reading and I would note the difference. What I did is I ran all the tests twice uh, just to verify my, my results. So what I found was this, um, and the reason I'm doing this is I'm going to be tower mounting my 10 gigahertz uh, dish and feed and uh, Directive Systems is going to be the uh, maker of the dish and, and feed. But I heard that the, they do not seal, why they don't do that I don't know, but they, they don't uh, seal the feed and so it's up to us to, uh, to find some kind of a suitable uh, cover to make sure that uh, rain, dust, dirt, bugs don't uh, enter into the feed. They don't use a horn like this, but um, uh, still you, the idea is to keep this covered and I wanted something RF transparent. So that's the reason I was testing different materials. So here's what uh, what we found out. The, uh, the fiber lid was about 0.04 dB insertion loss. Uh, the coffee can lid uh, also about 0.04. The styrofoam plate measured it twice, just not detectable. I didn't uh, detect any loss whatsoever in this particular setup. Uh, just 0 dB. The Ziploc bag also was 0 dB. The mouthwash plastic 0 0.04 dB loss. The nitrile glove one layer was 0 dB. The suet uh, plastic, which is interesting, I measured that twice, 0 0.07 dB. And it was very thin, but surprisingly, whatever plastic it is, it a little bit more attenuation at 10 gig. Also, the DVD plastic, which is a polystyrene, I'm pretty sure, 0 0.07 dB. So that was kind of surprising. The trash bag, 0 0.01 dB. I thought that would be a lot higher because possibly some carbon black. And then the uh, milk jug was 0 dB. So for me, it's a toss up between the styrofoam plate or the milk jug, and I'm going to go with the milk jug. I think it's. Um, Either one would, would work out just fine, but I think the milk jug is uh, more durable. It'll stand up in case uh, any birds or wind or anything uh, hits it. So there we go. Uh, I hope this is helpful. I was always curious to, to know for myself what different plastics did up at 10 gig and what would make a suitable cover for uh, aperture, open aperture antenna or feed, things like that. So 73, and uh, we'll catch you later, W-A-B-Y-A.